Welcome back to the low lamp sessions. That's on setting one, which is a little bit less intense than that. I like them both. They have definite mood though. It is two bulbs. That's the yellowish bulb, which kind of comes off brown. And that's the um, <laughs> crown chakra um, purple one with the orange one. Yellow orange one. Okay, so back to that. Oh, yes. Now we're alone. <laughs> Not really. Uh, Shay's here. Say hi, buddy. Oh, you're too low. Wait. There he is. Hey, Shay. Say hi to the nice people. Look into the camera. It's right here. Look into the camera, buddy. Don't be like those psychics who don't look in the camera after you tell them. Just kidding. All right, let me get this back up to scale. All right, okay, okay. Now I'll look in the camera. I'll be. I'll try to be good. Get centered. Okay, so got some new dreams for you from last night that were fun, fun, fun. But first, current energies. I have a lot of thoughts about current energies, but I'm not gonna say too much. They're kind of unformed. Let me. Let me say at least that everything, the bulk of the psychics that that our community follows, seems to follow, it's all playing out as they said it would, which includes this changing of the energy and, and moving into a more um, enlightened, uh, more benevolent, um, more a, a more a kinder energy. And you can see that if we're going to turn the corner, as I fully expect, it, it may be as slow as years or decades to kind of get the earth on the right track. But there was so much rot that was revealed by 45 and so many others that we keep digging it out. And it has to be rooted out. You can't go forward unless you get that out, really. It's like the poison in the system. The, the body politic, as they say. And he... And Vlad are, they are not on, they are not on the uprise of the wheel of fortune or fate that we always see in tarot. They're sliding to the underside. And as they slide to the underside, what is ascendant is this better juju. And um, what I am noticing is that things, the dominoes for a lot of people who have been doing some pretty crappy stuff four, four, five, six, seven years, but even longer within the Republican Party, this extended period of decades moving really towards authoritarianism, even if they didn't consciously know it. Salut. It's Teeling Irish Whiskey tonight, after my bike ride. Um, and um, so their time is coming due they're 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 falling out of power and roe versus wade was huge 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 i was really surprised when that ruling came down that it wasn't like it it didn't seem to be as ex, as like the reporting in the news didn't seem to be as explosive as i ex, expected i mean it was in one sense but i thought that particularly because I do read some of the right-wing sites, uh, notably the National Review, although uh, I'm reading it less often lately because they're really down the rabbit hole of uh, denial in a lot of ways, pardon me. But um, they did not foresee what a sea change would come with Roe v. Wade. And so we it's ironic that we have, in a way, we can be thankful. We can be thankful that the Supreme Court uh, fluffed it so bad because they are it's just one more brick that people can't take in this wall that they're trying to build and um, we're going to tear that all down and we're going to build a better wall it's not a great metaphor I mixed the metaphor but you get my drift um, their treachery is leading to a result that they're not going to like where the Democrats are going to retain and gain more power and who God only knows what goodies are going to pass in the next two years. And 
in in you know of course abortion rights will be in at the top of the list whether they get to it first or not it'll be at the top of the list so again and all the astrology points towards it too which is something that i've been noticing like when uh 45 was really kind of at his height, say around 2018, I remember telling a friend that I was hoping he was gonna, you know, blow it soon and we could get rid of him. And she's like, no way, because we don't even move into Aquarius for like another four or five years, depending on who you ask and depending on how the astrologer reads it. So um, the age of Aquarius, the golden age, supposedly, which I do believe is upon us. Um, we're either in it already or we're about to be in it, but those leading edges, they matter in astrology because even in the comments, um, like, uh, Kat had mentioned in the comments about, um, something related to my own astrology and my dreaming and that, um, I think she said that she thought, um, that I had some Aquarian traits that were coming through in my dreaming. And that could be true because I believe Aquarius precedes Pisces. And since my birthday is at the end of February, I'm only just slightly into Pisces. And so I'm very close to Aquarius. So I'm like the leading edge of Pisces. So I'm almost Aquarian. And so like, if you think about those edges as maybe not being so firm, if there are 12 slots on the Zodiac around the dial, those edges they might look like solid lines on a piece of paper, but actually there's fuzz and there's little bits of overlap. And when you're really close on one side or the other, it's, it's fuzzier. And so that can play out in a personal um, astrological a aspect and traits or on a global or maybe even greater scale. So where we may or may not technically be in Aquarius, but we're so close that that blurry edge... Um, we're in the blurry edge at minimum is my point, which means the energy now is more favorable to the altruism we seek. And so um, it will be almost, well, in my opinion, it is completely impossible for 45 or Vlad to advance any further. They can only decline further. And they are. We're watching it in real time. So um, that to me is a truism now. But I'm also noticing among friends, more friends are telling me that they're having these incredible dreams, um, super vivid dreams and dreams that seem like realities as opposed to just dreams. And of course, I say they are realities um, because I have been converted <laughs> to that way of thinking just by all the things that have happened to me. Sorry. It's so good. I couldn't, I couldn't not. Teeling. Mm, yummy. T-E-E-L-I-N-G. Not an expensive Irish whiskey. Middle of the road, ex middle of the road expense, but um, I think a really great flavor. My favorite, of course, is Red Breast, which is expensive, but, um, but Teeling is probably right up there. Second, maybe. So um, I think there are, there's lots of reasons for optimism. And, um, if it's true, as Sterling says, that we're in a 20, 30 year reset on the planet, it also matches what Jean Mayall says. And Jean Mayall, you can, she's not really active on YouTube, but I've mentioned her before. You can find her website, Jean Mayall, J E A N N E uh, M A Y E L L. And her predictions go out several decades into the future. And she predicted. Uh, like an America of 2050 that I could, that seemed tangible to me, where like hard times, but a better world, um, a smaller population globally, or at least in the United States, areas of the country that are unlivable, where people have to leave because of water, whether whether it's too much or too little, and we're seeing evidence of that every every day. And like even like Mississippi, uh, what's the capital of Mississippi? Um, it's escaping my mind. They have no drinkable water now. Um, the capital city, um, smaller state, I guess, but still, um, they can't flush their toilets. They can't shower reliably. The water infrastructure is um, gone 
well, it's unreliable. It's it's not reliable, and um, da- it's actually dangerous. They can't they can't drink that water, whatever water they might get. So that's a that's a that's going to cause suffering. <sighs> but the weird thing about suffering, personally and collectively, is how it can build you over time through it breaks you down um and it um humbles you and it makes you perhaps less um quickly judgmental of others and 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 casually cruel um less maybe dismissive of others um i speak i mean i speak kind of for myself but also kind of collectively um it smashes your it smashes some of your beliefs and expectations and um then you s- kind of look around and when you see what you still have and um the people that are in your life that you think are amazing um that you love and uh, like uh, when i came back from my bike ride um i was going to go swimming at the university pool, but, um, it's so still so nice out and summer will, will be over soon. And so, um, I'm like, no, I have to bike while I still can. And it was, so, oh my God, it was so windy. It was so windy. I couldn't believe it. Um, it was so windy along the waterfront, along the river and the lake. Um, cause when I bike along the, um, outer shore of the Buffalo outer Harbor, um, technically I'm, I'm biking along the Buffalo River, but basically the Buffalo River just becomes Lake Erie as soon as you pass the break wall. So um, the edge of the the northeasternmost edge of Lake Erie, and then it's just, and that's like the whole lake running down the 90 for like 200 or more miles. If you drove down the 90, um, well, of course, the throughway, the 90 doesn't follow the lake. If it did, it would be amazing. It would be the most amazing, beautiful drive. It would be like um, when I drove the Pacific Coast Highway in L.A. that one time, and it was just all against the water. Somebody should have thought of that and ran that 90 right up against the lake because you would just see 200 or more miles of lake until you got to Cleveland, basically. You'd pass through Erie, PA. Um, I think, how close is Pittsburgh to the lake? It's just off 90. It's a little more inland, I think, but you could basically drive four hours from Buffalo to Pittsburgh and just see lake. I mean, can you imagine? Somebody should have thought of that. Teeling thoughts. Teeling thoughts brought to you by teeling. (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, now I am tangenting. Um, It's an alcohol tangent this time. Um, ooh, but let me get back on track. How do I get back on track? Okay, so I biked. Oh, wow, I threw myself off. Biked, came back. Oh, shit. <laughs> 